Hey everybody, back with another pole position video. I just had gotten this um, with a pole position 2 cabinet, but it's original pole position, so I think I'm smoking aider from cloth. And um, the boards probably have seen better days. This is a revision B board, and it's a matching, well actually I don't know if it's a matching set, but they're both revision Bs. The solder mask is kind of different on the CPU board. If you can see, it's kind of like brown and dark green, whereas this one's just kind of green. Boards are quite dirty. We'll, we'll just take a look at the chips and stuff. I mean, there's some definite corrosion, and I mean, look at that. Right there. That's the uh, CPU, I mean, that's the video board. Now this one, it does have the original 131 ROM. So this is a ROM with the graphic glitch, supposedly, um, from the factory, I guess. So that was replaced with a 231. Um, so these are original Atari version 1 ROMs, I think. Interesting that these are EPROMs versus some of the other ones were masked um, ROMs that I've worked on. Um, more recently. I did steal the two Z8002s from this board set, so I put a couple spares in just for now. There's a Z8000. Look at the battery damage. The alkaline damage. I mean, we got trace this, I mean, this uh, 82S153, which is a programmable logic array, I believe is what it is. And, um, I mean, there's a lot of corrosion in this area. So I'm I'm expecting this not to work, but I don't know. I'm just interested. Fire it up. Man, I mean, there's some serious corrosion on that custom chip there. Now, I am going to just fire it up, but I'm... Honestly, I should probably remove all the chips, clean them, clean the boards, and then power it up. But I'm just curious to see what it will do. Like, I'm not even cleaning the edge connectors they're just they're dirty i'm just going to see if the thing works all right all right Put everything right is hooked up i double checked all the chip orientation just before powering up at least i did a quick look got everything connected correctly we got like some weird flash on the screen and that was it <laughs> it's a blank screen. Let's check our reset circuit and our clock. I'll fire up my scope right, here. I think, what is it, pin six? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have no clock. It's just high, which is uh, not good. Um, let's see what's going on with this bad boy right there oh, it's actually that transistor is actually somewhat working check my zener here well uh, that's interesting I think that zener is effed up <laughs> I mean I should have more than half a volt on the other side yeah, um, there's no clock, and here's the, um, on the graphics board, I'm sure we could probe around and stuff, but I'm sure this is just jacked up. I mean, look at, this is our clock counter chain thingy, clock divider, I guess. Yeah, I mean, look how bad it looks. I'm just going to start with this board, remove all the chips, clean them, get everything back you know together and then we'll start looking at it all right i got the video board at least um all cleaned up i've been just working on it for probably an hour i toilet bowl cleaner yeah let's see look at the sockets see the sockets aren't terrible in my opinion i don't know i'm just starting this whole process of doing this cleaning and then um Except for right at 2F, I think that socket 
is the worst of the bunch. You can definitely see some rust and stuff like that. So I'm making a note of that. But the rest of them, I think, are somewhat decent. Only one leg came out off through my cleaning with the Dremel. And this is one of those customs 6L. A few of the other legs might be weak. I'm not sure. But um, they all hung on there. So I'm going to deox it. Put the chips back in, solder an extra leg on 6L, and, oh yeah, one other thing. It does look like the, I think it was the color prom right here. I think it's the color prom at 12H, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that was replaced. I had to remove some of this other stuff, and I'll clean that up. There's some goop or something on the bottom. I'll try to clean that up. Um, but that's it, I guess. All right, all the chips back in, and it's definitely much better. I'm doing close-ups here because these chips were rusted as all get out. And, like, look, you can tell the toilet bowl cleaner on this chip here really cleaned it up. And I can almost see, like, copper. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing, obviously, but it removed all the oxidation and rust and stuff. So some of these were really bad. Um, even looking at the the crystal, which we don't know is working or not. One thing I noticed is, see how the discoloration, I thought the two board silk screen was different, but this one is brownish here as well. So I'm wondering if this is either heat or sun um, changing the color, if this was actually in the sun or something. Because look how it's, one color of green here, and then it gets more brown, like the other one was really brown. And I, I wonder if that has to do with being exposed to, you know, some more sunlight than the other board was. That's interesting. But yeah, all the all the chips in. I know this isn't interesting. I'm just kind of looking over the board, making sure I got my chips in right. This prom here, it looks like it might have been the original prom because the legs are super short, so it's like they desoldered it, maybe verified it, and then put it back in, or they stole one off of another board. I'm not sure. But, all right, this is the CPU board. All the chips are out. I'll just do some before pictures here. And a little spider web hanging out under there or something. I don't know what that is, but you can see the discoloration of the solder mask. It's kind of... Strange. I don't know. That can't be sunlight. It has to be some other interaction, reaction to something in the air or something. Whatever they used on this one. I don't know. Comments below, I guess. Look at this right here. Let me come back with a light. Yeah, I got a, my little video light on there. So, yeah, that. Hopefully, you can see that. That socket looks freaking terrible. Does the light help? I don't know. We'll see. But there's our um, alkaline damage right there. Some of these sockets that have the gold legs, see, look, look what's in, there's something in there. I don't know if that light actually helps or not. Right there. Some some of these sockets, like that one right there, looks look at that. The corrosion and stuff. So we'll come back and see what it looks like after giving it a nice little toilet bowl cleaner bath. I'll show some befores of the chips here. So that's the 6116 RAM. You can see legs are kind of rusted. Usually it's the customs with, look at that custom. And with the Dremel, you know, I don't know. I, I might do an experiment on this video. I'll do one with um, Tarnex and one with the Dremel and show you the difference that I get. Because you can definitely use Tarnex on these customs. And it might even be better for it to get all the way up inside because you can't get a Dremel all the way up on the inside of the legs but Tarnix won't do anything for 
those legs right here. That's not too bad. Let's see if there's any other. Here's another one that's really bad. All right, I was cleaning the legs and I didn't do a comparison. I did a Dremel and I did um, just to get, I think all the way in there. Well, it's wet, so let me dry it off. A little quick shout out to Secret Santa on Clove. I got this nice little USB thing. Let's see if it works. Oh, wait. oh I have to press and hold it, duh. Right, so I'm going to dry those this off. One, there's a few of them that really bad shape, like this one here. You can see the legs broke off. One, two, three really in bad spots. I mean, it's going to be tough to save this if it even worked anyway. There's another one on two on that side. Let's see this one here. That's not one of them. The problem is, is look how small the legs are at the end. You know, they're like half the size of a normal pin. And that's usually your ground and 5 volts, so those ones have a tendency to break. I don't even know where the other one is that, that is broken. Mm, not that one. Anyway, most of them do look pretty good. I don't even know what I'm filming right now. I mean, they look so much cleaner and better in general so anyway let me um fix some legs and power them back on right, it's the next night and I'm, I'm just working on this a few you know an hour here or there at a time but it is very time consuming i was working on this um i got all the chips back in that one um i have not messed with that one custom 9m that is jacked up i just grabbed a different custom temporarily um, because i can uh, and then I went in to, you know, clean and retin some of the battery damage area. And I removed, you know, all of the transistors. I removed these two transistors here, tested them, they're fine. One's at P PMP, one's at NPN, 3906, 3904, I'm pretty sure. And then I did these uh, resistors. And when I desoldered the resistors, actually a couple of them I lost track of, so I could have re reuse those two right there but some of them the legs were just falling off and stuff so I just replaced with brand new I replaced this but what, one thing that was interesting and I checked a couple other boards is R89 on a few of my boards is actually a 1k resistor the schematic calls for a 100 ohm resistor so I do have one board that has a 100 ohm resistor and then I had another board that was a thousand ohm, and I can't tell if it was replaced or not. So that's kind of interesting. I wanted to to mention that. That's right there at R eighty nine, um, and then it goes. Um, so that's a hundred ohm, and then there's um, that's a Zener diode. No, that's a switching diode right here, and the Zener diode down here. So hundred ohm. I think that's twenty two k, one k, three thirty, three thirty, one k, one k, one k. There should be four 1Ks. 1K, 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 1K. Those are the four two 330s, which are right there at the very bottom. 330, 330, 1K, 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 100, and then a 22K. But um, anyway, I, I, I'm reviewing that and saying that because I do not want to have to look that up the next time I do this. All right, but we're getting ready to power this thing on and see how we do. All right, I have the boards back up and ready to be powered on. The other thing is there is missing a capacitor here. It looks like maybe there was some work done right here by the LED. There is this C55 is missing. I'm going to power it on without it because it probably is not a big deal that it's missing. Um, but I do need to replace that, so C55... And I am not expecting this to power on and work. The only thing we know, like I have a question mark by some of the chips that had bad legs. 9M I know is bad. 9K I had to replace a leg. The whole board is kind of warped. 
if you can see that it's a little warped the CPU board and the video board we don't even know if it's putting out a good clock um, for example so but let's give it a try and nothing on the screen so come back right, and see check if we clock. can walk through this here on the schematic so clock for the Z80 comes from 7n pin 12 which comes from one you know the signal 1h if you can see that right there so 7n pin 12 and pin 13 is the inbound and that's low and the out is to the CPU is the pin 12 and that's high I got my frequency measurement on and that comes from the 7m let me see here right, that goes to this page of the schematic called P CPU PCB sync and where's there's my custom 7m and you get this clock signal which I think comes from the video board and the 7n pin 5 so let's check 7n pin 5 1 2 3 4 5 and we do have a 24 megahertz clock there which goes into and I think that's right I think that should be a 24.57 megahertz clock coming from basically the crystal and then it creates a clock and comes over to this board right there we just saw it at 7n pin 5 one whoops one two three four and then that goes out pin six okay I guess that looks right and then that goes into pin two so we want to look at 6n which is this thing that was re looks like it was replaced 163 yeah let's look at pin 15 Well, that doesn't look good. The, my ripple carry out, I should see something, I would think. And eventually that goes to 7M, pin 1. We've got nothing going on there. Seven n pin 9. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nothing. I think this, it says S161. I need to look at what that part number is supposed to be. It says S161 in parentheses, S163. The hell does that mean? <laughs> I think those are two different. Those are definitely different, I think. Um, but that's on the CPU board. Then I came over here to my clock on my video board. Whoops. And I want to look at this 12 megahertz signal. 7C pin 4. 7C pin 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I got nothing. And if I go to the the 163 at 7B, if we look at pin 2 inbound, well, that's kind of weird. That might be because I'm not grounded. Yeah, that was because I wasn't grounded. Pin 2 which is inbound, that's the clock signal coming in to 163 and then pin 14 I should have something it, it's, I think this I think this 163 is dead I should have some activity going on there that does not look right and that's a 163 and is this supposed to be a 163? I don't know but they I think they're also supposed to be S's I'm going to look those up 163 and the 163 three looks to be bad 
at least according to my logic probe. Pins 11, 12, 13, and 14 are all reading bad. And then 15 is the ripple carryout, which we need the, the other pin to right, work. I replaced so. it with the LS163 well, LS because that's what I have. But obviously I need to get it. That's way too fast of a clock to notice any difference. Let's check pin 15. Oh, I'm still not getting there. Hmm. Why is that? I wonder if does that need a 161? Because the 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 differences between the enables or something, and maybe this board is slightly different, and that's why I I might try that right, real quick. Just looking at this a little bit more closely. Again, it probably should be a 163, I'm not sure, but set pin 1, 7, and 10 are all tied maybe to high, I'm not sure. These uh, 3, 4, 5, 6 are all grounded. 9 is a load, and it comes from T, a signal TC. And if I look at pin 9 on here... I get nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nothing. So let me find out what that TC signal is, because I get I have clock at pin two. I mean it's not obviously it's you know low voltage, but it's twenty four point five megahertz. And that's why you need an S chip on here. And the LS is just not going to be fast enough for that. All right, that one, that TC or not TC signal comes from the 163 on the video board at 7B, which I believe I already checked and it looked bad. I couldn't get my logic comparator on there. Um, so I've replaced both 163s. I don't know if the other one is bad yet. We'll find out. Um, let's see here. Do I got no shorts? Yeah, it looks okay. Power on. We got some. We got an image. The colors look off, and we're booting. But the colors are off. That's weird. That could be this color prom right here. Um. I'm just pressing on it. Oh, we got some graphic issues. The small cars. Which in the last video, small cars were the one of these two ROMs here. Let's see if we have vid, um, sound. What am I doing? That's weird. Oh, it's not showing any... <laughs> My colors are off. Something's going on because when I went to black and white, it's totally jacked up. Hmm. But the good news is our CPU board is booting. And these problems look like they're on the on the video board. Nice. Alright. Um should we check our clock real quick? I'm excited. I can't think when I'm excited. One, two, three, four, five, six. We got a good three megahertz clock. And I mean, we could have some timing issues in general with those um, LS163. So I need to order some. I also need to order some sockets. And I guess we'll let's coin up and see it's it's a blank screen. It's a blank screen because the colors are jacked up. If I turn up my brightness, see, you can kind of see it. There's something going on there. There's a test screen here. Ram, okay, Ram, okay. But we're missing one of our colors. All right, let me come back. right to the color output section here. I'm looking at red green and blue, tracing it back to these proms here. 
So you got one prom for red, one prom for green, and one prom for blue. And the outputs are 9, 10, 11, 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, C, D, and E. So I'm just going to probe. Uh, let's see, 11, C is blue. I'm just going to probe pin 9 on each one of these. That's pin 9. Here, let me speed it up some. That's not much better. I need a digital scope. Anyway, you can see the activity on pin 9. Nice voltages, you know, 0 to 4 volts. Pin 9 for green. And pin 9 for red. That does not look good. That's pin 10. Dang it. Pin 10. 11. And 12. So I think this prom is bad. I'm going to have to pull that out. Well, I guess I could check the inputs, but those, those outputs look, is what looks messed up. The inputs are um, one, two, three, four, yeah, one. I mean, what the inputs are the same, really. I mean, it's one goes to red. Yeah, one just goes to all of them. Two goes to all of them. Three, four, five. All right, if we go to one, we got 60 hertz, basically. Two, three, four, yeah, so it's 60 hertz, 128 vertical, 128 vertical on all of them on pin one. So it's definitely the output, it's got to be. So let me figure out what kind of prom that is, and then um, and then replace it. Hopefully, I have one. All right, burned a new 74 LS 287. No, 280. What is it? Well, it's a 74 S 287 or 82 S 129. 82 S 129, or I burned this Tesla. Sorry, I forgot. Um, it's power on. Do I have everything? I think so. That looks better. Boom. That was our color issues, just that prom. Now we got some graphics issues still. The sign and some sprites. The road is fine. Just the signs and the cars. But that's it for tonight. I'll have to come back tomorrow. But making good progress. Replaced one chip to get it cleaned the board. Uh, whatever. I'll be back.